The latest sales data out of Germany shows that the Germans are this good. Well, literally, they're in huge trouble. Fortunately, Tesla's master plan part three will be able to take up some of the slack. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. on the Electric Viking. If you've been watching this channel for a while now, then you would know that, uh, yeah, big, big changes are coming over the next decade. And I think no one really realizes just how big these changes are going to be. I mean, gargantuan changes. The fortunate thing is, without Tesla, frankly, we would be screwed. The Western world would be in enormous trouble because realistically, China will take right now. Okay, China globally, China makes more than 50% of all EVs sold globally right now. That figure will probably increase, right, over the next decade. What does that say for the West, for auto manufacturing and all the companies that support that, and all the millions and uh, tens of millions of jobs? That says they're all at risk serious risks without Tesla actually kind of saving the day for the West, I mean, literally, that's what's going to happen, then who knows, maybe we, would have, we will lose all of the auto industry. So this is a good thing. Tesla's master plan part three, well, we should be very thankful for what the focus is, which is scaling to a gargantuan level. Elon Musk just revealed what is going to be the main subject of Tesla's master plan part three scaling the company to an extreme size. As The Electric reported last week, Elon Musk announced that he's working on Master Plan Part 3. I don't really think this is true. I think this, more is, this is more of a marketing tactic from Elon. I think he knew exactly where they were planning to go several years ago. I mean, he did say they were wanting to scale up to 20 million EVs per year, which sounded incredibly ambitious. But considering some real facts that we now know, Legacy Auto doesn't make a profit from EVs. Tesla does. China does. China is expanding their electric vehicle sales. The West, well, they're doing very little when it comes to electric vehicle sales. So the writing is on the wall, right? Master plan parts one and two from Tesla were very important pieces of literature in Tesla's history that laid out its plan to achieve its mission through a rough product roadmap and technologies that they would focus on. Now, Tesla has had some challenges, had has had some issues, but they have managed to progress through those plans pretty well. And they're now kind of getting towards the end of plan part two. This is one of the reasons, aside from the marketing, why Elon has announced the upcoming release of part three. Since he announced this, Tesla fans have been speculating about what could be included in the next part of the master plan. And I made a video about this. I'll put a link in the description below if you haven't seen my video about my speculation about what it would be. However, Musk took to Twitter this morning to announce the main subject is going to be scaling Tesla to extreme size. Main Tesla subjects will be scaling to extreme size, which is needed to shift humanity away from fossil fuels and, AI and artificial intelligence. So he's not saying shift away from AI, he's saying focusing on scaling to extreme size and working on artificial intelligence. Obviously, the fact that on Twitter you can only use so many characters has meant that that statement appears to say that they're going to focus not on AI, but they're actually going to be focusing on AI, of course. So the fact that Musk is aiming for Tesla to achieve an extreme size is not new, considering the fact that Tesla made it public, they wanted to achieve the goal of selling 20 million vehicles annually by 2030. This is a pretty... I think outlandish goal, I think it won't happen. I think it's frankly very optimistic and I'm a Tesla fan, as you guys know. The reason I think it's optimistic is because, well, we've already reached peak car. So electric car sales or the car sales market, not the electric, but the entire car market will decrease over the next few years, which means that 20 million vehicles could be more than a third of the entire global car market. And I don't see that happening. 15 million, yes, possible. 20, a bit, a bit too ambitious. But who knows? I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What's your number for Tesla in 2030? In comparison, the world's largest current automotive groups, Volkswagen and Toyota, produce about 10 million cars per year. 
Now, I would call Toyota the new Nokia. Just hasn't happened yet, but it will soon. Let me know what you think about that statement. Musk's new plan is going to go into more details, you would think, about how to scale manufacturing and supply chain to these enormous levels, especially amid extremely difficult global supply issues. And let's be frank, he's been doing this now for years, where the others have been pretty much standing still. For example, Ford basically only has one battery supplier. General Motors basically only has one battery supplier. Of course, I'm excluding China from this scenario, but it's pretty much correct. Same thing for most companies. Most legacy auto companies are pretty much dependent on one, maybe two or battery suppliers. Tesla has just gone, no, no, we want everyone. We want as much as we can get. We're going to supply, we're going to sign this deal secretly with Ghost on High Tech. We're going to sign this deal with BYD. We're going to sign this deal with CATL. We're going to make our own batteries. We're going to sign a deal with LG Chem. We're going to Samsung SDR. We're going to use everyone we can get and battery companies build factories for us. Build, 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 build. And that's what they're asking for. And that's what's happening well in advance. So they're well ahead in terms of getting the supply they need to be able to take out their competition. Here's what I'll, he also said. I will also include sections about SpaceX, Tesla, and the Boring Company. Historically, master plan blog posts have been about Tesla and posted to Tesla's website. So if you want to see it, you'll be able to see it on the website, but I'll also share it here on the channel. And then we can assess it and decide whether or not we, well, what we think about it, basically. Part one of the plan included mentions about Solar City. Part two had a part about Tesla's acquisition and integration of Solar City, and also talked about Tesla manufacturing a lower cost EV, lower cost than the Model S, lower cost than a sports car, obviously, on mass as part of their plan, which became the Model 3, and of, of course, also the Model Y. There's been rumors of this so called X umbrella company. The idea would be that this would be the umbrella company that would have all the companies underneath it, SpaceX, Boring Company, Tesla, et cetera, et cetera, SolarCity as well. This would be pretty difficult to achieve though. And I don't think this is realistic for the, those who are saying, making videos on YouTube about this. It's, it's not gonna happen. Just quit the speculation, the clickbaiting. It's not realistic. Realistically, as the electric says, mentions of SpaceX and the Boring Company could also simply be more collaborations between the companies which we have seen in the past, all the mentions could be completely unrelated to Tesla and only be about Musk's greater plan and how all these companies can fit into this plan. So what do you think about Tesla's Musk plan part three? What's gonna be in that plan? Do you think Tesla can sell 20 million vehicles per year? I think, you know what, they're gonna to need to because they're gonna make up some of the slack from companies like General Motors, Stellantis, Toyota, BMW, companies like this who might even go bankrupt or certainly will lose massive market share. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.